right? <laughs> it's true. All oh right, so my we're God. live on Facebook now. I just got a notification that we're live. So where do you live? I'm in beautiful Miami, Florida. Oh, Although okay. So you're Florida. also out of lockdown. You also have a Republican oh, governor. I never went into lockdown. I worked every single day. I think I took like maybe three or four days off. I self-identify as essential. So since Tony everybody Robbins says that we are yes, essential of you do. to all of our families, we are all essential workers and we need to start working for ourselves. You had a post like that. I, I, well, I, I, I talked about it on my show yesterday, yes. you know, and people were like, they're, they're, they're like weeping. They're like, I knew I was essential. I mean, it's like, man, uh, anyways, don't get me started. <laughs> I was going to well, say, I you, like you where guys are going to really understand that, you know, passion is something she has to work on. I know. Yeah. I hate it. That's there. I just feel sorry for y'all out in California or in Illinois or in Michigan. Hey, that Michigan lady is out of hand. She is out of control. Yep. And I'm all about women in leadership. She needs to be shot. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I was going to say, oh, if you look, look on this call, we've got wow. a lot of women, a lot of women in leadership that are going to be here on this call. And yeah, those are my girls then. It, it's just because I'm the eye candy. So I need you to bring the well, value. You have the best hair. I mean, obviously you don't you don't have to worry about getting it colored. It just looks good like it is. Dang. Yeah, I just keep adding gray without trying. So. But you know what, y'all? Men look better with gray hair. Like my husband's getting grayer. I'm like, I kind of like your hair better with a little gray. And me, I look like I'm 114 years old if I have any gray True. in my hair. True. That's why I choose blue. Screw it. Oh, good. That's Stacy. You got blue hair. I like it. I like it. I, I thought do. about doing my hair pink and locked down, but instead I just paid my hairdresser a stupid amount of money to come to my house and sneak in. Well, I did this. I my brother lost. said, I've got to get a haircut. I, get, I said, here, here's my hairdresser. <laughs> I go, you know, I'm like, here, she'll meet you at the studio and oh, cut yeah. your hair for you. He's like, how do you do this? I said, it's all about knowing people. It's knowing people. But yeah, you know, I didn't ask my gal to do that because I was afraid if she got caught, you know, we did for five minutes have, you know, police Nazis. Um, so she came to my house instead. That's awesome. People were like, your hair is awful fresh. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. I, my, I just like to hire greedy people. Exactly. Right? Capitalists. I tell people I'll never put anybody in my circle that's needy, but I will surround myself with greedy because they'll find a way to get like, something. Your hair is awful fresh. I'm like, How oh, are we God, friends you're then? Live right now. I didn't know I was telling all this stuff live. Well, it did pop up. Yes. It's, it's zoom is such a longer one than uh, anything else but um all right i want to start kicking off it's 204 we were i was rambling for no reason i apologize it's 504 remember yeah, to start you. recording thank you see luigi bring in the value that's it so we're all on different time zones see by the time i get off of this it'll be five o'clock here yeah not somewhere but here right over over where y'all are yep. see i can say that because glenn yep. morshower taught me that there you go so, guys i i am really excited to kick off war games and i'm really excited to have my friend lisa copeland on here um and i'm going to give you the official stuff and then i'm going to tell you how i know of lisa and how we go up to it right but Ooh, li listen to go. listen to the things she's checked off of her list as a as a human being okay awarded the top 100 women in the automotive industry Okay, so understand that we if those of you that There's know me. There's 101 of us, and I and I made the top hundred. That was impressive. Right. <laughs> she did. She did. Okay. Um, she was uh, the Women of Distinction Award from the Girl Scouts. Do you know how many women are in the Girl Scouts that went up? I mean, guys, check off this list that's there. Named one of the five most powerful women in Austin by the Business Journal in Austin. Okay, so you guys understand she's coming in, right? Walter P. Chrysler Award for Sales and Service it, with a brand near and dear to my heart, as we all know, called Fiat, right? I, I will tell you that I understand that she's the one that actually hit 100 cars sold for Fiat when it came in. And for those of you that, are, that also know me personally, that really hurt because that was my wife's brand, okay? Aww. And so she, she ended up getting her own purple, was it? Pink. Pink. So she yes. got her own pink Fiat Abarth made, okay, from the owner because she hit 100 and proved well, that it could be done. 
Yes, okay. I got it from the chairman of the board of Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Ferrari, Maserati, Alfa Romeo, Sergio Martin. My people, yes. eight cars as an award. That's amazing. Yes. Well, yeah, but that's a whole other story how I, that, I got that's that. That's a great of, story too, but yeah. you're gonna have to go look it up and find Something that different. story because it's it's an amazing story of what she chose and how she put it together. But she has intentionally gone into the world to make a name for herself. She's done a marvelous job doing it and she loves to empower women and <laughs> men. I'm here, I'm just very sensitive, right? <laughs> yeah, good, yeah, very good, sensitive, good. right? But again, what you're going to find is we're dealing with a powerhouse that takes no prisoners, okay? And she's all about providing value. And so I was really excited to say, get Lisa to come on. She, when she said, hey, your show's missing one thing, me, I was tickled pink, and that's her color. But, oh. and, and notice today, Lisa, what, what do I have? I know, I'm feeling like I should be having something pink around here. But I have yep. a sparkly office, so there you go. Right. So, and, and what I pointed out before and I sent her in a private message was on her desk, the little bar thing there for those that are on their phone, can't see it. It says the future is female. Okay. <laughs> and so I sent it, I'm like, oh, I see you. I see you there. Mm -hmm. and so, I had too. My mother had this made for me because she saw the guys on Shark Tank. So she ordered it off Shark Tank. So she paid like $400 for it out of China. I'm like, mother. Uh, anyways, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay though. It's worth it. Sign the bottom and now it's worth more than that. So, so what I would like to do for everybody here is give you the honor of the information that Miss Lisa Copeland is going to share with us. I've now pinned the video. So it is all Lisa all day. Oh, she, you're not going to talk to me during this? I will talk to you, of course. Okay. Right. And make sure what is our time good. frame? Uh, we go for about 40, 45 minutes. Okay, good. That's what I needed to know. talk about that. Yeah. And so that's what, when I look at it and go, okay, great. We want, we want to be gone at three for me, <laughs> three o'clock, five o'clock. Five o'clock somewhere in yes, Texas, right? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And you don't have to talk slower because there's a lot of people from California, so we can keep up. Yeah. Well, anyways, well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Lisa Copeland and thank you, Mr. Joe. He's a good friend of mine. And um i'm just glad to be here i love i love talking to sales does the majority of our group in the automotive industry no no okay no so we we've got real estate software sales we've got digital sales good for gaming companies we got financial investment so it's love spread it. out and i've kind of done all of it except for software just for the record okay because i'm not smart enough to do software it, it's a it's a fun we got a float tank guy on here too you haven't done float tanks either for no sure. Is that no. something for a septic system? No, that's no. where you go and and float in the oh. saltwater deprivation tanks. Oh, I haven't, but that's a bucket list thing. So send me a free coupon, whoever you are out there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, uh, I'm Lisa Copeland. I live in Austin, Texas. And uh, so it is four o'clock central time. So I know y'all, a lot of y'all are in California time. Um, little known fact about me, but I grew up in the, um, state, I was going to say the great state of California, but it used to be back when I lived there. And because um, I grew up there in the 70s and Ronald Reagan was the governor. And so, you know, times were good. And uh, so I grew up in Silicon Valley out there. And uh, my dad was an entrepreneur and um, like he, we had uh, factories that manufactured videotape, uh, eight track tape, cassette tapes. And uh, so my dad was a really smart guy, but, but where I learned to be an entrepreneur was from my dad, like the best of times, the worst of times. And, um, you know, so I, I grew up really well and cause my dad hit it right in Silicon Valley. Um, but I also saw you know, later in life where he told me where he made some pretty audacious um, risks. One of them that he didn't even tell my mother about is that he, in Silicon Valley that he leveraged our house. This is back when interest rates were 18%. Mm -hmm. He leveraged our house and everything we owned so that he could um, build another factory to produce uh, tape, a track. Uh, we had factories in Bulgaria. So there were times that the Bulgarians were um, in my home as were the CIA at the same time. So that was interesting. So from all of that, and my dad was very active politically. So my first political convention was uh, the Republican convention in Dallas, Texas, where my dad was a delegate. 
And um, so that's how, that was, that, that's where my love of politics came. And, um, you know, my dad was truly a patriot. And um, so when he retired at a very young age at about 50, Ronald Reagan named him as the advisor to the Department of Commerce on East-West Trade. And that was when uh, President Reagan had just gone into office. And, you know, and my dad was so proud of that. You know, it was not a paid position, but why he was an advisor is because back then he had to cross into the Iron Curtain all the time, Bulgaria, to our factories. And so to this day, I don't know whether he was a spy or not, but you know, who knows? But anyways, it's but so cool to say he was, no one can tell you different. They can't, you know, he, he's up there, you know, anyways, I, he, and there's just things in life. Like I wish I would have written a book then about some of his stuff and his former business partner is still alive, but he will not um, confirm or, or deny any of the stories. But I still remember the CIA and the Bulgarians being in our house for the cocktail party at the same time. So that's my California story, which I never tell. So Joe, you got that one out of me. Yes. And uh, then I, I, I got to Texas as quick as I could at about 17 and went to college here. But um, so anyways, I consider myself a native Texan. And especially after I see that all of y'all are still in lockdown and our governor's opened this thing wide open again. So that being said, um, I've, I've spent many years in the automotive industry. Um, I sold my dealership in 16 and then now, and then I did a TV show in Canada called Car Sharks, which was a re reality television show. And um, then I've written a few books, went on a speaking tour, did some stuff like that. Um, but now, no, 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 I am back in the real estate game. I have a mortgage company that I started 20 years ago that my husband's been running since, since my 10 year departure in the auto industry. And then I've just done a deal with Tark El Musso, which I think you guys probably know him from HGTV and uh, Haas Pratt, the, the listing boss, two pretty famous guys in real estate. And um, we're building a huge organization. So that's what I've been working on. So anyways, I've had cars, I'm back in real estate. Um, when, I, when I was running the mortgage company, I had an insurance company, I started one. So I thought if you're doing mortgages, may as well do the insurance. And then because I was a farmer, because I used farmers, I had to get my securities license. So I thought, oh, we should do financial planning. Anyways, y'all, big mistake. Because if you screw up one of the three verticals, they fire you from all three. So I never screwed up the mortgage. I never screwed up the insurance. Like it's hard to do, but man, mess with somebody's money. They'll fire you. So anyways, um, I learned Michelle's that- Michelle's nodding very largely because that's her yes. whole world. <laughs> yes, yes. And so um, those are some of the lessons I learned early on. I decided to stay in my lane. <laughs> and so that being said, I, I, that's the first thing I would say to a group of entrepreneurs is even though we think we can do be everything to everybody, we really can't. You know, we, we really got to niche, you know, you niche and you get rich. And, and I, I fundamentally believe that, um, you know, I love putting together teams and that's why I did the deal with Tark and with Haas. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I like kind of a global outreach and helping people get better uh, and helping people um, build their brands because I fund, you know, I fundamentally believe everything I've ever done hasn't been because I was the best, most educated. It hasn't been because I was the best closer. It's been because um, I built an influencer brand, and um, I was very, you know, and I'm very steadfast in what I I believe and what I stand for. And so, if you all will do that, and many of you do, and again, I might have the CEO of Microsoft on here right now. I don't know, but. Um, but by doing that, you know, you, you know, you don't have to be everything to everybody and that, you know, and as I've, I've crossed a certain age threshold in my life, 29, um, 29. yes, 29 forever. Um, I've realized that because back when in a younger threshold in my life, I really felt like, oh my God, everyone's got to like me. I have to conform and I don't anymore. And a good rule of thumb in business or when you're building, and I'll talk about this brand that we're putting together with Tark and um, Haas, but um, building that influencer brand, you know, you have to know that only 20% of the people that follow you, and I'm going to, I'm going to equate this into business in a minute, but what I'm talking about right now is personal brand. Only about 20% of the people are going to be like, oh, okay. And they love you. 40% uh, of the people are going to be lukewarm on you. And so if you have a good offer, they might do business with you if it's a, if it's the right day, the right time, and the right price, and then the rest of them are haters, straight up haters, and um, so that used to bother me, right? And so now, you know, Grant Cardone says it, it, it best, probably better than anybody. He says haters are fuel. Now I'm still a person on planet Earth, and I don't want anybody to hate me, but 
it just, it is what it is. And I'm sure many of you are very, very successful. And the more successful you get or the more accolades you get, um, you know, the haters come out of the woodwork. It is what it is, you know? And, and I think where I really suffered was, especially in the auto industry, because after we, we, we broke the world record and Marchione came and built me the car and we were in every global publication there was. I mean, New York Times, Wall Street, I mean, they're all in my showroom. And that wasn't because of me, it was because Marchione was there. And um, we had a full two or 300 of the International Press Corps because Chrysler brought them in for the press conference. And um, the people that I was the closest to, non-family members, I'll leave it at that. The people I was the closest to, I found out that day weren't rooting for me. And that is really, really hard. And so as more of you, again, I might have the CEO of Microsoft on here and if I do, forgive me, but I'm just giving my experience. You know, I'm somebody that I really, really root for my friends and I really root for the people that work for me. Like that is just, um, I, I interviewed my, my pastor the other day and she's a, it's a mega church, 14,000 members in three countries, but I've been there since the beginning, my husband and I have. And, you know, and, and she's told me forever, she's like, you're a Deborah. And Deborah in the Old Testament in the Bible was, you know, she was the one who gathered the men, who, who, who brought people together, organized them and, and got stuff going. And she's like, you, you always root for people. So I, I, you know, I think you fundamentally are that person or you aren't. But when you are that person, it's really hurtful when the ones closest to you don't and you find out later. And so I want to warn every one of you as you go up the ladder and you become more successful and you follow influencers like Joe and, you know, you build that business and you build that personal brand. Um, it isn't like, okay, hey, I'm here and everybody likes me. No, it's worse. So you have to be really steadfast in who you are, what you believe in, and um, and what you offer people. So I don't, Joe, if you have something you want to say back on that, but uh, well, I, I agree. And again, it's funny she said Joe's an influencer, which I never consider myself to be an influencer. Oh, sure, right? A comedian, sure, right? <laughs> I just forgot to get paid to be funny, but. Um, but no, but I, I do see the breakdown. I do see, I mean, the, the bottom line is you got 20% of the people that are sitting there saying, I do care about you. Right. right? And no, again, no, no. I mean, honestly, y'all, you have 20% of the people that, that would, that would chase you off of a, a, a cliff and follow you. We right. They're devoted. Those. The word I yeah. wrote was devoted. Yeah. Devoted. Right? So, mega fans, whatever you want right. to call them. Right. And every person on planet earth has those people and it may just be your mother. Okay. Let's be real. Right. But I'm going to give you some tips today to help build that brand and business. But keep going, Joe. Right. But th that and again, when I look at it and I say, remember, she's gone in multiple areas and become the authority in that area. Right. And that's what I look at when I say Lisa Copeland, because I knew who she was. I made an effort to make sure I got a chance to meet her. We got to finally meet at a uh, rock star event. Yeah. Right. And it was great. And I was like, this is amazing. I put out the effort to make sure I could be in a circle where she was to, so that I can sit around her. So and are say, you the 20% okay, that, that love me versus the 40 that I'm okay? Or, or the other right. 40 no, that I'm in, I'm in the, <laughs> the lockdown. Let's go. Come on now. Right? It, it, it barricade us with Lisa because she's going to provide oh, us with information that's going to be it. valuable. Right. And again, that's what I look for. But I believe if you look, if you watch anything Lisa does from outwitting the devil, she did that with Sharon Lecter, the series, she kept doing shows on here, impacting people's lives. Does she have to do that? No, she's about providing value. And that's how, remember the 20% of the devotees, right? It's still 20% when she adds another thousand people. It's still 20% when five more thousand people come around, right? I always look and I go, 5,000 people that you're maxed out on with Facebook, you go live and there's 12 people, right? And I'm like, wow, I better work on the 20% because they're, they got a different schedule than me when it's time to go live, okay? And there's all of this stuff. Now I watch view count and go, great. The view count tells me that people got the message and people are gonna be impacted by what Lisa said, okay? Because the lukewarm people will share. They'll share it. The, the people that are haters aren't going to share unless you screwed up and oh, said but they're watching y'all they are watching <laughs> but anybody anybody who knows the ceo of microsoft has already shared this twice because she mentioned them right she's i don't know if you're here i don't, I don't and they're even like, know they're the talking CEO about you is. right yeah i don't care either but you yeah. know up there. but no i agree anyway 
What was it? Sorry. He gets a copy of it anyway, you know. Right, that's true. Everything. Zuckerberg sends it to him. It's all it's all in the same group. But exactly. um but but if you look at this, right? It, what I what I'm loving is Lisa's going to prepare us to how do we, right, become that monster that's out there and a brand because that's what she's built to the point where she gets 10 grand plus to do a keynote speech. Right. That's if she's doing it on the charity side of things. I was going to say I raised the price, but yeah, yeah sure. I know. I know. I was saying if I asked, right. Yeah. Oh, I'd do it for you for free, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. But do you see what I'm saying is that to come from one specific industry and be demanded by all industries is somebody who knows how to build a brand. It's somebody who knows how to properly market themselves. And I think that will help each and every person that's watching to maximize themselves. So, because again, we can say, great, Lisa, that's great. But if it doesn't put money in your pocket, who cares? Right. It doesn't matter, but that's what she's going to do when it comes to providing value. So I want to make sure I stop babbling because you're, you're over there, the star. Yeah. Uh, stop. Anyways, but you know, so, so that's one of the things that, you know, um, I get hired by companies like Bloomberg and Citrix and stuff to come in. And again, you know, they're, you know, so, you know, you think about a trainer, right? I am not a trainer. If somebody ever came into me and said, oh, we want you to train our staff on how to sell something. I'd be like, hmm, I don't know that I could do that because I've never, you know, I think I'm a great salesperson, but I do it differently. And um, so what I want to talk to you is about a brand that, that I've been working on for quite a while. And it, it is called Cellionaire. It's a social Cellionaire. So the majority of people who have spent their life in sales that are successful are millionaires. Let's be real. That's the only way to make millions of dollars is if you're selling something. Because most jobs, right, if you're in a job and you are in a, a, the average person and you're not selling anything, well, then your, your talent uh, or your skill has a price that's been set on it based on the market, right? So it's kind of a commodity. And then you're capped. That's fine. You go to work nine to five, you do your job, you get your paycheck. That's great. You know, I, I think about my sister. She's that person. She doesn't she, you know, she's been working for the same company for 10 years. She's way smarter than me. She's kind of like my mom, the PhD, but she doesn't like to sell. So forever she'll make this much money, but she's good. She's comfortable. She knows she can pay her bills. Cool. That's great. I've never been that person. I want the opportunity, right? And I, I bet you everybody in this room, every, I say room, Zoom, room on Facebook, everybody wants that opportunity because otherwise you wouldn't be on a show like this and you wouldn't be following Joe, right? And in my personal opinion, it isn't about going and buying a system or selling a certain way, kind of like in the old days in the car business, when I started 30 plus years ago, um, I was following Joe Girard. And I think now that Ollie Reed is one of my dearest friends, and he's the one who unearthed Joe Girard, who broke the world record and held it for 30 years. But back then, I, I went to see Joe Girard in stadiums and here's how you close. And it's the 10 steps to the sale. And when the customer says this, you say this. And if he says this, you say this and blah, blah, blah. And that's a lot to remember y'all. It is a lot to remember. And if you fast forward into the world today, and I, I use this as an example, and I say it with huge respect, it's the Kardashians. And they have made billions with a B off of being influencers. Now, that isn't the kind of influencer I want to be. I mean, maybe I wish I looked like Kim Kardashian. So, hey, let's just all be real. If we look like Kim Kardashian, that's great. Um, but that is her job to look like that. That's her job, but whatever. But, you know, they are living proof of what you can do if you're an influencer. So, 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 so keep that in mind when you, when you look at influencer and the way that things are sold today. You know, the majority of companies, and I pulled some stats before I got on today, because I'm, I'm working on, you know, my new book, The Cellionaire. Um, but 68% of consumers are more influenced by the brand reputation, who they are and what they stand for, and are more likely to do business with them than watching a tele, you know, watching traditional or static ads. So it, Example, I get on TV, I'm a car dealer. Uh, 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 look at me, come to my dealership. I'm number one, I'm number one. I've got the biggest inventory. Guess what? Nobody cares because it isn't about what I am. It's about what I can do for you. So as a consumer and, and I, especially women consumers, I've written a few books, but my last book was, um, it's over there though. Uh, it was a uh, car buying her way. And uh, it was about female consumers in the automotive industry. But, you know, so what, what people want more nowadays, no matter what you're selling, is they want social proof. 
You know, it doesn't do you any good to spend all the money and get on television or newspaper ads or greatest website if you don't have social proof of who you are, what you stand for, and what your customers feel about how you make them feel or feel about the experience. So, you know, these companies I work with now, and I'm like, look, I don't care if, you know, and again, I only work with sales teams, right? So that's it. That's, that's my superpower. And every single one of you, even if the CEO of Microsoft is on here, every single one of you is a brand because people fundamentally, it isn't what you sell. It's what you stand for. You stand for something big enough. People buy what you're selling. And I think that that's why we took that Fiat brand in, in one of the smaller markets in the country to number one and kept it there for almost five years while I owned the store because people would buy cars for me, not because they liked the car, but they liked what I stood for. And some of those accolades that Joe talked about, I earned during that time because, um, you know, I was so involved with the Girl Scouts and I was, I was the chair for Go Red. I had Mrs. Bush, uh, Laura Bush as my, as my keynote. We, we, we raised a million dollars at a luncheon. Um, you know, it was, just, it was, it was what I was standing for in the community and I didn't do it to sell cars, but because of it, I sold cars, if that makes sense. And so I, you know, I would tell every entrepreneur out there, everybody in sales is number one, figure out what you stand for. Like, what is it? Like, I'm very passionate about empowering women in business, very passionate about it. Uh, I, I, I think that in many, many industries, and I've, I've always been in male dominated industries, uh, women, women get a bad shake. But I think that women cause their bad shake a lot of times too. And that's because they don't own their power and they don't own their seat at the table. And um, interesting story, but after my team broke the world record and Mark Ioni came, uh, Sergio, Google him, he's, he was a very big deal. He passed away a couple years ago. Um, he, um, he, he put me on the National Dealer Council for Chrysler. And so there was 18, at, the, at that point, there were 17 guys that ran it and then they put me on I was the 18th and I was the woman and I will and I did it for five years I think and um so we governed about 2700 dealers or 2600 dealers so we governed all the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram for uh, not Ferrari Ferrari was a different uh under a different holding company but Maserati Alfa Romeo Fiat Dodge Jeep Ram and so we were like their senators and y'all I didn't talk for two years because I was so intimidated by who was in the room with me I mean everybody else flew in on their private jets I flew in on Delta and um, so, I mean, these were big, powerful guys. They didn't like the fact I was there. They didn't like the fact, nothing for, for the first while. Nobody spoke to me. It was crazy. But I had somebody very wise who was the head of the Fiat brand at the time, who's now the head of Dodge. His name's Tim Kaniskas. And he sent me a text one day because we were up there every 90 days. He sent me a text one day and he goes, you need to say something. Like I had to have somebody else tell me to find my voice. And I, I mean, I was the number one dealer in the country. I'm the one that broke the world sales record. But, but I got in that room. And it was like, freeze. And if I was a man, I probably wouldn't have, but, but see, and so, you know, so as women, a lot of times we do that to ourselves. So, but, but with that being said, um, it's really important that every one of you decide who it is you are, what you stand for, and then work within that community of people and that community and make those your clients, make those the and cater to those people. Cause I think there's, there's so many people, like when you look at social media and you look at uh, even companies themselves, you know, it's like, why, what do these people stand for? And, you know, and um, I started a book and I didn't finish it. And I don't think I will, but it, it was called the big Cell, and it was build a movement, build an empire. And um, it was all about companies that built movements, you know? And so you look at Apple, Apple is a movement. Okay. Not everybody is on Apple phones. In fact, there are more Android phones than there are Apple and that's okay. But Apple caters their message not to try to talk to everybody who who's, who's using an Android right now. They're not going to try to convert them. It's useless, but worldwide Apple only holds, at least at the time I was writing the book. So it's been about a year and a half. It's probably more now, but Apple only held a, about 30% of the worldwide market. Okay. They, they were not out trying to talk to the other 70% because they knew that they were not fans. They were catering to the 30% who were die hard. I'll stand in line all night long when it's going to be on the shelf in a week. And so, you know, and that was part of the book. And I had many examples of many companies. So, you know, that's what I had to do when, because I mean, I was the one that launched Fiat back to America. And so I was the first dealer in the country to open. And, um, and so versus me going out and trying to talk to all the people who own trucks in the great state of Texas, 
I really niched down our market. You know, who were people driving, not even just small cars, right? I was trying to find people that were lifestyle enthusiasts because Fiat's a lifestyle brand. I was trying to find people that wanted to, that, that were brand enthusiasts, right? And, and, and people that were loyal and um, um, influencers and things like that. And so, and so I think everybody out there, it's, it's such a noisy place, but if you can find your space, if you can find your people and your tribe and people that, that already like what you do and then expand on that, you're gonna be more successful than trying to talk to everybody. Does that make sense, Joe? Absolutely. And my, my next thing is, is that for everybody that's sitting here, I see so many heads nodding and people writing that comes in, but I'm just gonna ask Lisa to give you all permission to speak at the table. Yeah, please. Okay, please. not not interrupt right now. I'm saying just like when she sat there, somebody had to say, "Yeah, speak what's there, right? She's providing you with the value to say, look, you got to find your group of people to talk to because, but you can't find a group if you aren't putting out what you are and what you believe in, right? And, 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 so and Joe, and that's scary for people because people say, well, if, 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 if I tell people who I really am, then they won't like me. No, it's, that's exactly opposite, y'all. You, you're always going to have people that don't like you, okay? That's life. But when you let people know who you are and what you stand for, that is when you build the mega fans. That is when you build the tribe. That is when you build people, no matter what you're selling, they're buying. And if they're not buying it, they know somebody else that's buying it from you. And that is what's critical, but it's, it's, it's pure fear because people are afraid to, especially in today's world, my God, you write something on Facebook and you got 45 people blasting you. And, you know, and, um, and it's like, wait a minute, this is my wall. What, who are you? And why are you writing on my wall? Do you have no life? Right. And so, but that's, and I that's, get a kick out of that. Oh, I'm sorry. But that to me, I'm like, that's right. Keep going. Because that just means I could be considered an influencer based on all the comments. Yeah. Just, just look at the quantity. Don't look yeah. at whatever's there. But yeah. I look and go, hey, I got some good action on this one. Let's, let's piss people off again. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, you know and, and, and I, you know, I, I believe in business, you know, you, you know, you kind of need to stay away from politics, especially nowadays. Um, or not. I don't know. But um, I do kind of sort of. I mean, everybody knows where I stand. I got a red hat on for God's sakes, but. Um, yeah, that was pretty apparent. Yeah. When you did that. <laughs> exactly. So. But, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, you've got to build that authority brand. And I've had the pleasure and the honor of working with a, a woman a lot uh, by the name of Sharon Lecter. And Sharon was the co-founder of the Rich Dad, Poor Dad Empire. Can I get a show of hands of anybody who knows Rich Dad, Poor Dad? It was the largest personal development brand in the world and still is to this day. So uh, she and Kiyosaki were partners. And um, then after about 10 years, they decided because he was not ethical, they decided to divorce. And so um, they were business partners. And so he bought her out. She got a call at that time from the, right after that happened from President Bush. She became, she was appointed to the uh, Financial Literacy Council. And then from there, the Napoleon Hill Foundation called her and they said, we want to revive the works and the work of Napoleon Hill. And if you guys know anything about Napoleon Hill, the greatest book ever, one of the best selling books next to the Bible is Think and Grow Rich. And um, so they asked Sharon to come in and do it. So, so during the Rich Dad days, they, I think they sold 23 books. They had 23 books at about 30 million and say uh, 30 million books sold. It was a billion with a B, multi-billion dollar brand. Um, then Sharon brought Outwitting the Devil out of the vault after 73 years. This this book will change your life. Absolutely. Uh, Hill, yeah, Absolutely. Hill wrote it in 1938 and it, it got sent to the vault for 73 years because it was too controversial. But if you read it, it's still controversial today. But but where but what I've been really uh, intentional about doing in my career, probably in the last 20 years, and it, I use the word intentional, and I want you guys to write that down. If you have no word of anything else you get from me out of this thing is to be intentional. I intentionally met Sharon Lecter four years ago. Uh, after I sold my dealership, I she and I were speaking at the same event and I knew who she was. And I had just written the book or co-authored the book, Crushing Mediocrity. And um, my co-author, who was the number one jet saleswoman in the world, who just got appointed by the Department of Transportation, uh, Elaine Chow, onto the aviation board. I mean, big deal. She says, Sharon Lecter's who we need to know. She needs to write the forward to our book and you're with her, figure it out. And so anyway, so four years later, she's one of my very best friends in the world. And 
what I've learned from her because she's made more money than I have. I've, I have not made a billion dollars yet in my career um, is that you have got to number one, no matter what it is and what you sell, you've got to build an authority brand because you see an authority brand will outsell a commodity brand any day of the week. And I, I know some of you are in real estate out there, which if you're in real estate, you need to get a hold of me. You need to be, a, you need to work with us. But um, uh, if you're in real estate, you know, it's, 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 it's 6%, 3% on each side, right? So do you want to work with me who I can, you know, I've got the influence to get something sold without having to go to Zillow, or do you want to work with Susie Lunchbucket, who's, you know, relying on a Zillow budget, or if you're in the automotive industry, right? You know, I mean, a white Ford F-250 is the same price, you know, do you want to buy it from me or do you want to buy it from Ali Rita? And then you get to say that you work with the number one car salesman in the world, although he sells Chevy. So if he's watching this, my apologies, right. Ali. Yeah. Um, but all of that being said, you know, people like to work with authorities. People like to work with people that are successful. And um, so but, what you can know, you, somebody do to identify? Because I think part of the issue is identifying ourselves as that expert yeah. We know we know what we can do, but do we believe the did we drink our own Kool-Aid? I think no, is I, a lot of the problem people have. No, I love it. And you know, and the number one thing I would tell y'all to do is create content. Create content. Know your market, know what you're selling, know the value that you bring to the market and then create content. Now, I'm not talking about being one of those spammy people that you're just bleh, throwing up on everybody every time you get on Facebook. Or, or tagging Lisa, oh. Joe and Ken Walls. Yeah, and all that stuff. Please don't yeah. do that because you're not getting to my wall. Uh, <laughs> but if I like you and you do a great job, I, I will share it out in a hot minute, but it needs to be my decision, right? Not, and that's, that's a good rule of thumb. Um, that being said, you know, the number one way to create an authority brand is to create content. You know, that would be a vlog, not a blog. Writing's dead. I'm talking a vlog, um, which is a video, a video blog. I'm talking about having a business and per, um, a business social media, you know, so business Instagram, business Facebook, you know, having a LinkedIn profile where you are um, adding value to your industry, your community. Because the thing I will tell you about customers, and I've learned this, you know, is that they will Google you. And what's so hilarious is that there, you guys have probably might have already Googled me. There is another Lisa Copeland in the universe that is, has done Huff and Huff Poe and, you know, she hasn't done Fox and stuff like I have, but anyways, she's up there. And so people are like, man, you're a over 50 dating coach too. That's awesome. I'm like, no, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but she works really hard to try to keep up there and, you know, and, and, and create content because she rolls off of, you know, my SEO stuff. But, you know, but that being said, create content, build that authority brand. You know, Sharon says, and she taught me a long time ago, you know, are you an expert? Yep. Why? Because I say I am. And because I present myself as an expert and anytime I'm in a business situation, because, because I know my industry, because I know how to create content that, that is not salesy, that is that, that gives value to other people. Because the more successful you can help somebody else to be, the more successful they're going to make sure that you are. And Absolutely. You, do you want to open it up now? Yeah. And you're, you're lucky because the guy who's my alter ego is a, a world tour poker player. Ooh. So I just look like a gambler, except he's like half my age. So yeah. So. But when you go go search for me, you might you may find me. You may find some skinny poker player guy that's there. Well, at so. least at least you're not an over fifty dating coach. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Yes, that's a good. I'm point. like, okay, it could be worse. It, I mean, I could be a stripper or a porn star, I guess. So there you go. That's, wow, that well, could be worse. Been there, done that. But you know oh, what? Hey. Because, but then yeah. they'd look at it and go, "Nah, that's not her." The over fifty dating coach. People are like, "Oh, she's got a good." That side could be. Working. That could be. <laughs> yes. You, no matter how much you wear the hat. Yes, exactly. It's going to be there. So, all right. So let's open up for some questions. I know Edna will always have questions. She's down there, but go ahead, Michelle, you got something? I do. I do. So Lisa, I'm the, I'm, I own my own RIA and my, I found my niche is actually empowering women with everything about money. And so but when I'm, when I'm creating my brand, um, how much, like, do I want to include the men in there every once in a while? Or do I just really want to focus and niche and get rich. Okay. And, um, you know, I've, I've made a lot of money in the women's market. I, I had another company, which I've sold, but it's, it is called cars. It was called cars her way. And, um, so go to Amazon and Sharon wrote a book, uh, called, um, think and grow rich for women. And it was with Napoleon Hill foundation. 
and it was the alter ego in the year over you know 20 or 2009 uh, so she inter interviewed women who were millionaires and you know think about it because you know even the, the women's market is still half of the world right so that yeah. isn't even but but women need it more than anything and you're in a really good spot because i've got friends here that are financial planners that are that only work with women and women like that uh for whatever reason men men not so much you know um but I, you know, my advice to you- Men want to work with women to too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But Thank no, you. it's true. And, and again, like me coming from automotive, we, we used to laugh all the time and say, look, 90% of all registrations in the People's Republic of California, right? Have, <laughs> I'm right. have a woman's name on it. So yeah. anytime the guy goes, I don't need my wife, I can, you just laugh. And you're like, bro, that's like one out of 10 times. Is that legit? And it's right. usually a single guy. That's why there's right. nobody on there, right? Or, or his mom or, co-signs. Or a guy that's about to get single. Because if, you know, my husband comes home with something like that, I'd be like, you're done. Uh, and, yeah. and, and I have been married 32 years in November, so. Yeah, exactly. So, but again, now if the husband comes home with something for her, that's different. He'll be pissed. No. Like, no. right, ladies, like, I don't want you buying my car. I don't want you telling me what I'm going to drive. And it, it, it isn't even a nice present to me. Now, it would be like, hey, go, go pick out what you want. That would be cool, but yeah. I mean, my husband's not picked out, like he doesn't pick out our houses, my car, clothes, I mean, nothing. No, where, where, where my children went to school, who our doctors were gonna be, mm -mm. No, women are, that is what we do. So it's Michelle, right? Yeah, Michelle, niche and get rich and you still have 50% of the population that, that's your client. And they will love the fact that you are all things women and they'll love the fact that you're sensitive to the struggles that women have because of that 50% of women that you would be speaking to, 50% of those are single. And so, you know, which is a whole nother niche, but anyways, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Next question. Mo's thinking of something, it's scaring me though. Uh -oh. I can see it. When he fixes his hair before he goes to say something, it's gonna be a, Edna can't connect to audio. I can see it, it's cycling back there. Luigi will ask a question, but only once he gets close to the camera. Oh, I love it. So that's how yeah. we know That's how we know when he's gearing up with his question, it, he comes up forward to come So, in. you know, while you so, guys are coming to questions, I mean, what, one of the things I'll tell you is, you know, you need to figure out what is the one thing that you're going to be an expert in, right? And so I'll use Michelle and financial services, right? So, you know, um, you want to be an expert, either it's to build wealth, it is to manage wealth, it is to get out of debt, it is to be financial literacy, right? Like, um, you know, and that's, that's what I have found, um, even in the automotive industry, right? And so I had the store, obviously, we sold to everybody, but who I spoke to, like, everything I did was around women consumers, the boys still came, they still bought cars, but I empowered the women. So that was my message. That was my battle cry. I didn't hate men. You know, they didn't hate me. I mean, you know, men would come in and go, my, my, my wife says, I got to buy a car from you. She saw you speak at this luncheon and we're buying a car from you because every guy listens to his wife. So being in the women's market, no matter what your, your product is, will never hurt you. Well, maybe not no matter what your product is, but in, but, but in most financial decisions, if it's insurance, mortgage, real estate, uh, financial services, you know, you cater to her, you get him. You cater to him and you forget about her. You're dead to her, dead to her. So. Absolutely. And I tell everybody I'm the head of my household. My wife just happens to be the neck that turns the head. Right. So <laughs> you're a smart guy. Yeah, you exactly. It. You yes. get it. So, but no, that's, I, I look at it and say, again, what I think, thank you so much, Lisa, because again, I've got, I've got a pad of notes over here with the stuff yeah. that's there. Because again, until you become the expert, until you become, until you believe you're the expert, you aren't. And if and you're not you the, expert, are the expert, if you say you are, you don't absolutely. need me to tell you you're an expert or Joe to tell you you're, you're an expert. You're an expert when you know your craft, when you believe you fundamentally believe that there's not a person on planet earth that should not be doing business with you because you're going to give them the best service, the best advice on planet earth when when you start owning all of that you are an authority so you so at that point you have started building that authority brand and then how do you take it from there is you start creating content and you start creating content that helps people you start creating content that's advice you do not create salesy stuff 
you know, I never ever do salesy stuff, but I sell stuff because of it. Because, because sidebar, people will reach out to me and go, hey, da 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 Okay, okay, cool. So, so you want people to follow you because of the content that you create. You want people to follow you because um, uh, you, 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 you bring value to them. If, you know, and Joe, you've seen it. I know every one of you have seen it. Those people on social that are just like, okay, two minutes and okay, now this is what I sell and this is what I do. And, 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 and it's just all the time. And like some of these auto industry trainers, like that would be, that's one example. I'm like, dude, I'm over it. Stop. I get it. I know what you do. Cool. Yay. But I don't want to see it every day. Right. Um, because, because again, that's, that's part of building that authority brand. That's part of building that, um, that influence. People will follow you. I mean, I, I think about when I had the car dealership and people that I did mortgages for and insurance, they all bought cars from me. Like I have, I've had the same clients for 30 years and they laugh like, okay, well, what are you selling now? What are we doing? What am I buying? Right. Because I mean, I have kept up with those people. I email them. I keep up with them on social. And so the word I started today with was intentional. I am intentional. If somebody's ever spent a dollar with me, they're on my mailing list. If somebody's ever spent a dollar with me, they're, I have friended them on social media. If somebody's ever spent a dollar with me, I'm on LinkedIn with them. I am communicating with them. I'm looking every day who the birthdays are, you know. So without being salesy, they're on my newsletter list. You know, they get to, you know, they were the first ones to know that my daughter was pregnant with my third, third grandson, right? And so it isn't, it, it, it's about the human connection. It's about the human connection. So, and, and what I found is that people really don't do a good job of keeping up with their clients and providing value. People are very afraid to call themselves an expert because they think, well, you know, I'm not as smart as Mark down the street. So if I call myself an expert, people are going to laugh at me. No, they're not. They're not. I mean, not one of you on here can tell me that I'm not an expert. Well, how, how would you know that? Just like, I can't tell any of you, Michelle, I, I you know, you tell me that you're the leading authority when it comes to financial planning for women. I'd be like, wow, cool. Okay. Even I mean, if it's just your office. Yeah. Right. I'm the leading, I'm the leading authority on sales at my desk right now. So yeah, own it first. It own the first spot and then move yourself outward. But like for me, BDC genius and sales genius, I right. named it, right. It was a, it was a nickname given to me in the automotive space. And they were like, oh, Joe, he, you need to sell more. Go see Joe. He's the BDC genius. He can help you sell, do that. And I was like, I'm going to run with that. That makes perfect sense. Not one person has given me a sales IQ test to right. say, here, let's prove you're a genius. I'll ace it. Let's be real. But when you look at that, but again, they're not, they're not challenging you because I'm branded that way. And because I created the brandy, I believe it. I believe you can't get past me. Right. Anytime somebody says, oh, my goodness, we're having an issue with my BDC. I'm like, well, I can help. Well, how do you know? You don't even know what's going on. I'm like, please, I can help. Right. And guess I, know what? Everything I believe you. Now. I huh? believe you. I believe what? you. You believe you. I believe you. But if you don't believe yourself and you don't own that authority, you don't own the fact that you are the leading expert in whatever you do, then you will then other. So if you can't see yourself that way, others won't see you that way either. So that's the number one thing to build an authority brand. And, and one of the things I want to point out, because Lisa snuck it in and it was very subtle, but um, she, she chose to make a, a relationship with somebody that she needed in her circle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, like I will tell you that when I went to go to the Rockstar event, I, dr I jumped in the car. I drove four hours to spend two hours there to make sure I met Lisa and I met Matt and I met the people that I had a list of people that I had to meet so they knew I wasn't just this person on Facebook so they can associate yes this is it which means at any point in time I can go post a picture with Lisa and go yes we met right yes we met that's who it is because now they can attach back to me that yeah you're somebody that I physically met just not a social friend but I drove four hours spent two hours there and drove four hours back simply for the fact that I wanted to include myself with a circle of people. The same thing when you said, I'm going to this event, Sharon's there, right? And then your partner says, you better get to know her. It was the intention of putting yourself in the circle with who's there. And, you know, and, 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 I'll, and I'll, I'll wrap with, you know, on the fact that, you know, um, with Fiat, 
you know, I, I, had, I had heard Sergio Marchionne speak in 2011 at the um, National Dealer Show, the chairman of Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Ferrari, the whole bit. He was, he was the global chairman. And he gave a speech that inspired me called A Promise for a Promise. And that day I said, I'm going to meet that man. Fast forward, And I was just a GSM, Platform General Sales Manager for a big auto group. And so when I was chosen to be the dealer to launch Fiat and be the first one in the country to do it, blah, blah, blah. Um, I said to the head of the Fiat brand at the time, I go, hey, now that I'm at like Fiat dealer and he's Mr. Fiat because he's from Italy, um, I want to meet him. He's like, yeah, right. He's the head of the European Auto Union, Ferrari, blah, blah. He's not going to meet you. You're nobody. I mean, in so many words. And I was like, oh, no, 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 that's not a good answer. So another year goes by. We do, we do some, you know, we're number one. I go back. I say, hey, I, I want to meet him. Like, no, Lisa, you're nobody. No, forget about it. And I said, what do we have to do? Break the world sales record. And I, and, and I tell you that story because when, after we did it and Marchione flew on the G5 over from Italy it, to my dealership in a private meeting with him, with the international press corps sitting on my showroom floor, the first thing he said to me was, you sure went to a lot of work to meet me. I said, yes, sir, I did. I was willing to do whatever it took to meet you. And from that day on, my career skyrocketed. You couldn't, I mean, skyrocketed. And he made sure it skyrocketed. He, he only came for a meeting because he was, he, you know, somebody made a bet in his behalf and it's on YouTube. You guys can Google it. He talks all about it. Um, but out of it, I got a seat at the table. I got a car that's worth probably a hundred thousand dollars. I got a, a diamond watch from Fiat. I, he just like kept lavishing me with stuff and whatever, because you know, the most powerful man in the automotive industry in the world couldn't believe that somebody wanted to meet him that bad. So I guess my, my question is to everybody, is that who is the one person that you could meet that will change your life? See, Sergio changed my life. He changed my life forever. Who's the one person that you could meet that will change your life? And what are you willing to do to meet him? And so, I, so I would leave all of you with, you know, make that hit list of five people that, and I'm not talking movie stars and stuff like that, although Sergio is up there with, you know, the great ones, but, you know, it, it doesn't have to be the chairman of Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, okay? You know, it could be anybody, but who's the one person you need to meet? What are you willing to do to meet them to get, to become some, to be known by them? I guess that's the best word I can say about Marchione is that I was known by him at that point. I knew him and he knew me. And for the time, at my, or my life at that time, being in the auto industry, that was a big deal. You know, today... I wouldn't need to know Sergio Marchione, but now, you know, I've got a partner who's on HGTV and I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm really intentional about who I surround myself with and, um, and who I affiliate with in business. And so I, I would leave all of you with that. Who are the people that, that, that can take you to the next level? What value do you bring them? See, I brought Marchione value. We broke the world sales record. So, and I was a woman dealer. So he had something to talk about, made him look good. So, you know, it has to be a two way street when you meet these people, but I would, I would leave you with that because, you know, there, there, there's one person out there, I promise y'all, on planet Earth that can change your life. And I know because I did it and I lived it. And um, it's still changing my life to this day because I always get to tell that story. It's the greatest story in the world. George Clooney's involved. Like, there's a lot of stuff to that story. But, but all that being said, I own that story forever. I'll be 102 and I'll be telling that story, right? And so how do you write your story? How do you build your brand? How do you become an influencer? You know, it is, it is becoming intentional. It's being very intentional about everything you do. When I decided to jump back in the real estate game, I decided to pull myself in with the biggest players in the industry. Why wouldn't I? I mean, worst thing they can say is no. And they were like, oh my God, we're so excited. What you did in the car business. And I'm like, okay, I was a car business, but cool. Right? So right. you have to ask. So I, I think that would be my, my whole takeaway for today is because Every, every one of you out there is a star. Every one of you has it in you to do what you want to do, but you have to be intentional. You have to create that authority brand. You have to own it. You have to know 60 or 60 uh, to 20. Yeah, 60% of the people out there, or excuse me, 40% uh, of the people out there aren't going to like you. You have to be okay with that. Only 20% of anybody you ever talk to is going to become a super fan and probably even only and do business with you. That's okay. You know, it's called hypnotic rhythm, hypnotic rhythm with uh, Napoleon Hill. And it just means you just keep going and you keep going and you just get into a rhythm. And, you know, um, six no's always turns into a yes or whatever that close ratio is for you, whatever you're selling. And you just you just keep moving. You don't let one person paralyze you or stop you or discourage you. And that's a mindset, y'all. That's a mindset. 
Guys, she did a whole meeting in the last three minutes. Yeah. I mean, it, that that would have been enough for the, the hour we've spent together is just that last three minutes that she went through. Lisa, I truly appreciate you Absolutely. so much for coming out and, and sharing Absolutely. with the group. Does anybody have one last question before we go out? I, and then I have a question, but I don't know that we're going to have time to, to, to do it. Uh, my question to you, Lisa, would be, how did you know to pivot? Because based on what, what I heard, you know, you went from car sales to insurance to real estate to uh, mortgage broker to speaking. <laughs> I saw a picture with. Uh, That's impressive that he's got the whole list. <laughs> He was paying attention. Here, bro. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah. The only thing that's ever lasted with me is my husband, and that's on any given day, you know, negotiating. Wow. <laughs> he, he's on edge. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. He needs to be. I have cars that the inspection stickers don't even get renewed. So, wow. Nice. I'm on to so, the next so one. That will be my, my question to you as far as like, obviously, you have killed it and rocked it on everything that you have done, which is. Not everything. Believe me. I, I, I only talk about the things I killed it and rocked well, it on. I've yeah, had way okay. more failures than success. So would you say that? This is, this is, this is success. It's this thick. If it was the book of failures, it would be that thick. Just remember that. <laughs> That's awesome. So how, yeah. what, what triggered in you to say, I got to go move to the next thing? Was it, I failed, I yeah. failed, I failed. And then that was the no. thing that worked. No, no. Um, I, you know, I kind of typically go out on top. Um, that's kind of a thing with me, but it gets down to like when I, why did I go to the car business? Because I had a buyer. I had somebody that wanted to buy, buy me out. And I saw the writing on the wall for Fiat. Um, so cool. So what was I going to do next? Well, I was going to go out and get paid to tell the story. I just told you guys I did. Um, and then, you know, we've owned this mortgage company for 20 years. My husband has been running it for the last 10 since I've been gone. And, you know, um, Michael Dell said it best that you follow the money. So Dell Computer, he's here in my hometown. Michael, you know, when, when Bush was president, uh, Dell put all their uh, eggs into um, doing uh, Homeland Security. And that's what they did when Obama was president. They did everything into healthcare. And so, but you know, I was in the audience one time when, when Dell said, you follow the money. So I was, you know, a lot of times uh, I, I will just follow the money. What's hot, what's not? As long as I can sell it and it's something I believe in, um, there's nothing you can do. I mean, like why, why stay in, in an industry that's failing or with a product that's failing? And, and Fiat was about to take a big dump and I knew it because I sat on the board. So it was like being a deacon in the dirtiest church in the world. I had a buyer, bye, next. So, you know, I mean, I think that you have to be really smart and you have to watch the markets and you got to watch what you're doing and um, markets pivot markets turn real estate is it's, it's good. And, but the day it's not good, I'll go sell something that is good. Perfect. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. No, I like it. So I, I know everybody here is saying, okay, now how do I connect with Lisa Copeland? Right. Cause some of you have just been nodding so much your head's going to fall off. <laughs> okay as it comes no, through this but girl. see she can dock bottle too right she bobbles both, of, but, my, both um, of my grandsons will pick it up and go oh look at your head um the, so scott actually has a float spa true rest float spa in austin and he said he's gonna hook you up i love I will it hook really? you up. See, yeah, i'm gonna see. reach out to him thank you so, yep. thank you so you can go float and learn and, what and it i is. promise i will i'm um, all right about it and i'll get up you know i will You'll get people together You'll vlog. Don't write I'll vlog about it. About it. Vlog it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Okay. So the best way, like, um, I don't have like a, you know, I'm on social media, of course, but I'm not the over 50 dating coach, but if you want to get on my email list, um, I actually have a way to do it right now. The website's up cause I built it, but it's not perfect yet. So I would just tell you to send me an email at Lisa at Lisa Copeland.com, or you can go to Lisa Copeland.com and you can download my ebook. Um, and that gets you out of the mailing list. And you know, and that, and again, this isn't, you know, um, when I do my books and when I do my uh, once a month is all I reach out, but it's really trying to bring value, like what I'm finding, what's going on in the markets or new opportunities and things like that. So I would love to, you know, connect with all of y'all there and, you know, stay connected forever. Um, I won't spam you. I promise. Oh, come um, on. Just, man. just, <laughs> And Luigi's I'm not the only okay. Luigi's okay if women's Luigi's okay. It's not oh, men. Luigi. Luigi. No. <laughs> I did send I can't you tell you how many of our clients name their cars. All everyone had a fiat named them, and they're all Luigi. Lu I'm like, we're over Luigi. There's too many Luigi's in the house. Come on, they're killing me over here. That's why my ear itches sometimes. Like, oh, come on. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Any other questions? We're letting Lisa go. She's been gracious enough with her time up to this point. 
Oh, I'm so cool. Today, and I, she, she dropped so much knowledge. This will be on the YouTube channel and uh, reposted so you guys can go back and watch it again and write down what you missed because she did. She hit us with three meetings worth of stuff in one meeting. Sorry, I'm bad about that. Yeah, like, I was gonna say, there's nobody here that's that's afraid to drink from the fire hose, right? The comments were here. Uh, Facebook was going crazy with comments as well. Christopher Roush has been here the whole time just going, yes, yes, yes. And so he, he's been you. partying with us as we go. But, thank you. Uh, excellent, I wanna thank everybody for taking the time, especially you, you, Ms. Lisa Copeland. Absolutely, take care, everybody. Anytime. And uh, take care, bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye guys. Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.